Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and this is part 5 of our C Sharp for Automation Testing video series. And in this part we'll be talking about understanding types. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 3 and 4 since this part is going to be a continuation of that two parts. Alright, so let's get started. So what are types? So type are like blueprints of what we create, again more like classes that we discussed in our previous videos. And as we already discussed in our previous videos, classes are types. But since the classes in program.cs that we created in our previous video is something you customized and created, it's also called as custom type. And there are also some of the predefined types available in C Sharp, which you might have already known if you have already worked with some other automation testing tools like QTP or Test Complete, where we also use the data types such as int, string, etc. But here we also have some other data types like booleans, double data types, but we are not going to talk about all of these predefined data types right here. But just to give you an understanding of what types in the C Sharp are, this is what it is. These are the different types of predefined types available in C Sharp. But you can see that there are various different types available like int 64, int 32, boolean, you have different versions of strings and double and you have float, you have enum and there are so many different types available which, but we are not really going to talk about all of them right now. But we will be touching some of the different types of interesting types in next video but as of now just get informed that these are the predefined types available. So the custom types is the one which you create in C Sharp as classes and the predefined types are something which, which are these and you can also call them as a reserved keyword so you cannot just use this bool anywhere as a variable name, right? So these are the different ki kinds of predefined types. Or are there any other types available in C Sharp? Of course, yes, like Boolean types as I already said, numeric types, arrays, etc. So these are the different kinds of types available. So if you're really interested, then this is the self-interest learning corner of yours where you can learn something more about value types and reference types. These are kind of very, very important concepts in C-Sharp and very, very helpful when you start automating uh, your applications will be handy and you will know why these value types and reference types are used, right? So let's start working with the different types then. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we worked in our previous video and we worked how to work with different classes and how to create an object and how each object maintains its own copy as you can see here, right? But right now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete all these codes. I'm completely going to get rid of them. And this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about some of the types available. So as I already said, there are different kinds of types like int and you can see that if I type int, it brings me different kinds of int available like int 16, int 32, int 64 and there is some kind of uh, uint which is otherwise called as unsigned integers 16, unsigned integers 32, unsigned integers 64 and there are some pointers available like signed integer pointer and unsigned integer pointer handle right so you can see there are different kinds of int available similarly if I just type float you can see it's a float keyword and you can use the float and then double and you can see there's a string and these are different kinds of classes for string like string builder and string comparer so these are something which is kind of very very handy when you start working with them like string builder will have different kinds of methods which used to append some strings or you can perform different kinds of string manipulation operations which we'll talk about them in a later videos of this video series but as of now this is what it is string is also a type in c sharp right and one of the most important point to note is the types has its ranges for example int has its own range so int 16 has some range where you can give the numbers whereas int 32 has some range where you can give the numbers and in 64 has some range where you can give the numbers what is this range means so if I select this in 16 and if I want to see what is the real implementation of this, of course, you cannot see the real implementation, but you can see the metadata of this implementation, 
This is very, very handy while you start working with your C sharp code, any code, it can be your Selenium code as well. For example, if I just right click this in 16, and if I go to something called as go to implementation, this menu, you can see that it brings me up the metadata you can see from metadata. And here you can see that this is how the methods are actually written for this particular structure. You can see it's a structure type, it's not a class, it's a structure. Again, we are not really going to talk about structures or enums in this particular type videos at least, but we'll be discussing about them in later videos of this course, right? So this is a in 16 of structure type. And you can see the maximum value you can supply to this particular int 16 variable is this. And the minimum value you can spec specify is this. So if you exceed the value, you'll get an error. And if, you, if it really doesn't make any sense, let me copy this text or the ranges and let's close this. And here, let's say I'm gonna assign a value for this maybe salary is equal to this. Right, so this is the maximum value I can assign to this int 16. And now if I do a console.write line of uh, salary, and then if I maybe print it, or if I run this test or the application, you can see that it shows me three, two, seven, six, seven, which is great. But if I try to assign this value, you can see it's instantly showing me a scrolly line there, and it says, it represents a 32-bit unsigned integer and it cannot be converted to a shot meaning the value of the type in 16 will not support this range of value you cannot even supply this so constant value this cannot be converted to a shot so if I change this to maybe int 32 then it works but you can see that in most of your code we will be using int. If you see our previous example uh, of the previous video, we just used the int here, right? By default, it's a 32-bit signed integer. If you specify int, then it represents a 32-bit signed integer, right? If I do a F12 here, what is F12 again? I just click the, right-click this, uh, this particular structure, and then I went to this go to implementation, and you can see there is something called control F12. If I do control F12, I can also go there. So let me do this F12. You can see it's bring me, bringing me up to that particular structure and it shows me the maximum value this time is more than what it has in int 16. So you can see, I don't know how to count this value, but it's it's too huge. So if you again ask me how to, how it look like for int 64, of course it's gonna be very, very bigger. Oh my God, seriously, I cannot count this. It's very, very big. So this is how you can, you can actually see the maximum value and minimum value a string can actually hold within here. All right, super. So this is what it is about the integer. And similarly, if you go some other uh, data types like string or Boolean, and again, you can do, uh, see, you cannot assign uh, a number to a string, something like this. You need to assign it in a, double quotes you just cannot assign using as a number so you need to assign it right like this and what is the maximum value minimum value right here if i just do f12 there is no such thing here there is nothing called maximum value or minimum value but there are so many interesting methods available in string you can see there are so many things like compare concat equals format uh, contains to ends with index of uh, last index of split lower two lower two upper maybe you'll be using this a lot the two lower two upper surely you'll be using them a lot for example let's say uh, i'm just typing it something like this everything in capital letter as karthik and then if i oops let's change this to be a little meaningful variable there as name name dot two if i just put dot here and if i just type two you we can see it brings me up a method called two upper and then just save it and if i oops not two upper maybe two lower because it's already in uppercase two lower there we go and then if i try to run this 
you can see it became small letter because it's in capital letter and it turned out into a small letter so you will be using them uh, basically to check if the particular string which has been passed from your uh, UI of your application uh, is uh, something case insensitive if you want to verify that then you change it to two lower or two upper so I see many people doing that but that's of course not a good practice because you need to you need to verify it exactly how it looks like in the UI so don't do or two lower or two upper there it's kind of bad practice again right you can also do some other things like uh, splitting the text uh, or the string here and also perform uh, some kind of operations like if you just click dot you can see there are uh, different kinds of method available but currently you can see there is some down arrow uh, here and there is a method name if you think what is this then don't worry about it yet these are called as extension methods but I can get rid of them by deleting some of these text out there in the header and now if I just click dot uh, you can see those uh, those kind of methods will be missing with the arrow it's because they were coming from link uh, namespace so don't worry about it yet we have not spoken about the namespaces so we'll be talking about that and then there is something called ends with method uh, so you can also determine if the text is ending with this particular uh, uh, text or something like that so we'll talk about uh, these kind of stuff while we start working with uh, some other scenarios uh, in our programming right so don't worry about it so these are how these data types are being designed uh, so these are the different kinds of types like integers and string and there are some other stuff kind uh, like boolean so if I just type bool and let's say the test case and uh, and test case equal to a past so you cannot just say past here rather you can specify something called as true and true is a keyword and if you specify this this is how it should be so bool type expects only two things if I just hover here it says represents a boolean true or false value that's it and again if I want to go to the implementation of it to see the metadata I can just type F12 or click F12 and you can see that this is what it is so you can see there is some other stuff like comparators and equals so these are kind of stuff which is required while you will be comparing to uh, two same types like boolean types so if I specify this to true and if I want to print them uh, I just say console.write line and test case uh, so if I specify this and then if I execute it you can see it's, it just brings the capital T there and the reason is because true is a data type but it's written type but when you print them it becomes capital D but you did not convert a boolean to a string but still how is that working and those things are called as a boxing and unboxing and uh, type conversions kind of confusing right don't worry about it we will be talking about castings and boxings and unboxings and uh, type conversions and all those stuffs in later video of this video series but as of now just be informed that there are something happening behind the scenes in your in your compiler which converts these type the boolean types into string right great and this is the one thing about the boolean and you can also specify you can also do a conditional statement checking to see if it is passed or failed so there's an if condition maybe if you have remembered somewhere in some other language ever before exactly that's the one if this happens then I'm good if not then I'm not good and uh, for if not they are other in programming language they are telling it as else uh, so if this happens it's good else this should happen right something like that all right so this is uh, the other things about the boolean and there is some other different types available which we are not going to talk about I'm just going to talk I'm just talking about some of the interesting types here which are predefined types uh, something like integer booleans and uh, and strings kind of stuff but there are various different types we will be encountering while, uh, while automating our, our applications so just stay informed that these are the different types available in C sharp so in the next video we'll be talking about uh, boxing and unboxing and uh, the real reason for boxing and unboxing is because you will understand why this boxing and unboxing is so useful while you work with different types right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day